Okay, so previously we looked at all of some simulations that led us up to this idea of the central limit theorem. Right? And the idea is no matter the population we're sampling from, if our sample size is big enough, right, by big enough or sufficiently large, we showed in our simulation that, that usually 30 is pretty good. Right? Then we can assume normality of the sampling distribution of the sample mean centered at mu with standard error sigma over root n. Okay, so that's so that's great if we understand that idea, right? So that's kind of a theoretical idea, but then how do we apply that? Okay, so let's let's kind of sum all that up. And a, another big thing was what does the population we're sampling from look like? Right? That was another big distinction. If the population we're sampling from is normal, Right? We, were, we were in good shape for any sample size. Right? We could assume normality. But what if the population we weren't, or we were sampling from, was not normal? Right? That's where we had to get our big enough sample size. Okay, So this is summing up all of those ideas. So why do we care? And why do, why do I keep saying normality? Can we assume normality? Is this normal? Well, we want to see normality right? because the normal distribution is easy to work with, right? We know how to do all this stuff, z-scores, the table, find probabilities, right? Once you feel comfortable with that, it's, it's easy. So if we can standardize, right? If we can assume the central limit theorem holds, if we can assume normality, we should be able to standardize, right? So a z-score we know looks like this, whatever value we're interested in, subtract the mean, scale by the standard deviation. All right, so we've... So we've done this this before. With something like this, so we said something along the lines of if x has a normal distribution, right, centered at mu, standard deviation sigma, right, then our z-score was simply x, certain value of x, minus mu over sigma. All right, now we're changing things up and we're saying, well, what if we're taking a sample of size n and we're looking at the sample mean? Well, x bar sampling distribution for certain sample size, size n should, should be normal if we can assume the central limit theorem holds, should still be centered at mu, right? but rather than standard deviation of just sigma, we've got the standard error of sigma over root n. Okay, so our z-score then should be looks very similar to what we've seen before. Right? X bar minus mu over not just sigma, but the entire standard error, sigma over root n. Okay, so when can we and when can we not standardize? Assume the central limit theorem holds and then standardize. Okay, well, we already know our, our basic way of standardizing is if I have a question about just a single person, and I mean, you could even think about a single person as a sample size of one if you wanted to, right? Because what is sigma over square root? of 1, okay, that's just sigma, right? So a single person or individual from a normal population, we know how to do that. That's our, our simple standardizing type thing. Okay, but if we have a normal population, right, we can still use these ideas and standardize about the sample mean for a small sample if our population is normal. Right. We also, if we can do things for a small sample from a normal population, well then yeah, of course, we can do this kind of thing for a large sample from a normal population. Right. But where things really get interesting is when we have a non-normal population, now we can assume normality if we have a large sample. And again, what do we mean by small and large? Well, it, again, it is sort of arbitrary. Right, but we know that once we hit about 30, we're in pretty good shape 
to be able to assume normality. Okay, so what can we not do? Okay, well, we still, if we have a non-normal population, all right, if we don't have information about exactly what this non-normal population is, right, we, we can't really do anything with a single individual, and we can't really do anything with a small sample from a non-normal population. All right, at least we can't assume the central limit theorem holds and standardize here. All right, now there are other methods that we'll, we'll look at in the future. There may be other methods we've already talked about where we can, if we know what this non-normal population is, like if it's binomial, right, we can find probabilities with a single individual. All right, but this kind of thing, we have, we'll have other methods for that we'll look at in the future. So let's look at an example of this. And usually things like, like heights, weights, stuff, stuff with humans tend to be normally distributed. So let's say the, the average height of adult females in our country here is normally distributed with a mean of 64 and a half, standard deviation 2.8 inches. All right, now we're going to find two different probabilities here. Number one, that a female selected at random, so one person is taller than 66 inches, and part A here, this is just our, our standard right, standardizing type problem. Part B, though, a sample of 25, probability that their mean height, or x bar, is taller than 66 inches. All right, here we're looking for is x. Now we notice we have the same, dealing with the same number here, 66 inches. So here we're saying, what's the probability that one person is taller than 66 inches versus what's the probability that the mean in a sample of 25 people is taller than 66 inches. Alright, so that's so A, we already know how to do. B is where we can apply our central limit theorem. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on A, but we know how to do this, right? Find your z-score. Go to the table. It's a greater than problem, so we got to go 1 minus whatever we find in the table All right, or we can we can check that using technology alright so this is our kind of visualizing our area it's about thirty percent alright so our answer to part A this was about thirty percent alright so I want you to think about a question that we that we'll revisit here in a minute if this probability is about 30%, we've got about a 30% chance of seeing a female taller than 66 inches. All right, which of these probabilities do you think is going to be bigger? A is about 30%. You think B is going to be smaller than 30%, larger than 30%, right at 30%? All right, so, so think about that for a minute, and let's, let's see. So in our solution to B here, since we're dealing with the sample, right, and we know we know a couple things. We know number one is our population normal. Yes. Then I should think, what's my sample size look like? Population's normal, so we're in good shape, right? Regardless of sample size, so it should be normal. My standard error will be this. Right, that's sigma over square root n. I get 0.56. Get 0.56 there. So my z score is 2.68. All right. Again, I could go to my table. I find this probability here, confirming that with technology. Here's what we look like. All right, so I knew I could apply the central limit theorem here because my population is normal. Now maybe you were thinking, oh wait, our sample size is 25. Since our sample size is 25, well how can we apply the central limit theorem and standardize? Remember, our population is normal. If your population is normal, you're in good shape, assuming normality for any sample size. Now what if we didn't know the population was normal and n was 25? Right, then we wouldn't be able to assume the central limit theorem holds. We wouldn't be able to assume normality. Okay, so again, let's compare these two. So this was this was part A, and this was B. About 30% here, and here we're less than half a percent. 
right? We could phrase that as averages are less variable than individual observations. Okay? Averages also tend to be more normal, right? You could think about that like we have less of a chance of observing 25 outliers versus one outlier, right? So let's look at another central limit theorem example. Let's look at another example here where we're sampling from a non-normal population. Right? So let's say our population has a, a simple distribution like the uniform distribution. And say this is a uniform that goes from 4 to 6. Right? If it's a uniform that goes from 4 to 6, that tells us our, our PDF is just simply one half. The mean of a uniform, if you'll remember, right, we take, so if we say this is a uniform from A to B, A here being 4, B here being 6, right, the mean of this distribution is 5, the standard deviation is this. All right, here's what it looks like. We want to know what does the sampling distribution of the sample mean look like if we have a sample size equal to here 40. All right, so 40, pretty big, bigger than 30. We're in good shape. We can assume the central limit theorem holds right, and assume normality. Okay, so the sampling distribution should look like this. It should be normal. The mean should be 5. Right? That 5 comes from the original population's mean. And our standard error should be sigma over root n. Right? So, it should look something like this. Now, I could do any kind of problems. I could solve whatever I wanted. But this distribution, the point here is figuring out how to take the original population, deciding, okay, can I apply that central limit theorem? Can I standardize here? If so, we can then solve all kinds of different problems using standardization, using the central limit theorem, and our normal distribution. Alright, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.